my hero, Dave Sandbrook. Um, Dave, you're the, you are the reason I started playing the fiddle. Yeah. Um, you are, I'm afraid. Um, I blame me. <laughs> um, I started listening to you when I was when I was six. Um, I started playing the fiddle, and you were the first fiddle player I ever heard. And um, I just wanted to start by asking you a question that I get asked all the time, which is sort of why why folk music for you? You know, did you always want to be a musician, and and why did you choose folk music and 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 not something else? You know. Mm. Well, in some ways, it chose me. That was um, I started off when I was a kid. And I was, that's what they, the music was. And then later on, uh, when I was a teenager, I was playing in bands and stuff. Uh, I think what you do with your life has got a lot to do with the people you meet. Mm. You know, it's like, it, it's like taste. It, it's, a lot of it's acquired through the people that you meet and the people that you know. Yeah. And I just happened to have met at the right time people who were playing stuff that, and it filled me. Yeah. It did that, whatever that thing is, it does to you where you, the tears well behind the eyes and you just are yeah. thrilled by it. Yeah. I can't put it in writing. I seem to remember hearing that, was it Beryl Marriott told Beryl you? Beryl Marriott, to, yeah. She told you to start playing the fiddle and stop playing the guitar or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she, she said, uh, uh, guitar is the ten a penny, Ducky. <laughs> right, yeah. But uh, having a love of jazz, when I came into Fairport, there was an opportunity to work around chord sequence. Mm. That hadn't presented itself to me before. You know, when I was working with Martin before that, we were, we were playing... Um, uh, I mean, you get a bit fucking wild, you know, I mean, there's no doubt about that, you get a bit wild. But I mean, you weren't working uh, with, with, with a song, say, where you were given a chord sequence to blow over. Mm. You know, to, to, to wail and do whatever you like. I mean, you know, you know, that, wasn't where we went into. And when I when, uh, joined Fairport, that was a great opportunity. I mean, also playing electrically, we've been able to use a few gadgets. Yeah. But it was just a great opportunity to be dirty. <laughs> to be dirty. Mm. Yeah. So how, when you first joined Fairport, I was going to ask you about your 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 fiddle and the one the fiddle that you used. Because how did you electric fiddles didn't exist? Did they? No, no, we we. Uh, Smashed the telephone. Right. And I used the, uh, the telephone in the mouthpiece, wasn't it? The, the <laughs> diaphragm was in there, and we strapped that to it. Oh, right. I guess that, is that on a f early recordings that you did? It's on, on our freaking. Right, and that's the fiddle sound that that's you got the, was from a. Yeah, that's a telephone. Uh, I'll have to go listen to it again now. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, just with an elastic band around it. Wow, fantastic. Well, you, you, you wrote some songs, sort of. Collaborating with Richard Thompson, like Now Be Thankful and Crazy Man Michael and, you know, these legendary songs. How how did that collaboration process happen? Did, was it a sort of 50-50 thing? Did you...? Uh, well, we, did, we never sat down in the same room to do it. Right. Most of the time, I'm particularly mature. Right. Crazy Man Michael was a, an exceptionally... Uh, it was already written a tune and... and uh, but he'd, uh, he'd written the words just after the car crash, and, uh, mm. and he'd uh, put it to uh, the tune of William Windsor. Right. But I thought that the words were so good that uh, it, it really merited its own tune rather than just mm. picking a tune out of the tradition, you know. Right. And uh, Richard uh, said, if you think that way, go ahead and go ahead and do it. You write one. <laughs> yeah. And you did. Oh, right, so it's your melody and his words. So uh, I did, I wrote it on the piano. Right. I don't play piano. I can't play the piano. No, I can't either. <laughs> it's far too difficult. Hence the tune. <laughs> is a very kind of familiar friendly place because of that I think it's very easy to ignore positive criticism and focus in on 
on like one negative comment. And I was just wondering, in your life as a musician, how have you dealt with sort of negative criticism in your uh, time? Uh, time heals all wounds. <laughs> <laughs> It's really kind of how it is. The thing I think uh, I don't see much positive criticism anywhere. Mm. What I see is uh, negative criticism, mm. and I've never I've argued quite a bit with critics who told me that they they uh, uh, feel it necessary to be uh, uh, critical in order that I might improve my playing. Right. You know, which, uh, quite frankly, I usually have a giggle about. Yeah. That it, when cr critic starts, to, uh, there's a couple of exceptions. There's Ken Hunt is an exception. Mm. But normally speaking, uh, uh, I think critics try to be as nasty as they fucking can. It, you know, it's like a. Uh, uh, there's nothing positive about it. It's like let's see how nasty we can be. Everybody wants to be Dolly Parker, and and uh, they're a bunch of wankers. Really. Well, <laughs> it's not too esoteric, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. The other thing is that you can't have a career without its ups and downs for the critics. You see, if the critics say you're good this week, and then they say you're good next week, then they say you're good the week after. It's boring. Yeah, I can tell you scrapbooks of mine going way, way back. It's exactly that. And you keep all your... Yeah, yeah. You've got cycles of good and bad. Right. And you just try and ignore the bad. You can't ignore it because you know you're a sensitive artist. Exactly, you take it to yeah. heart. That's the thing. You do, of course you do, and, and it's wounding, and, and that's uh, that's what's wrong with the critics because they don't see it. Yeah. I got a, a good friend who's a uh, he writes crime for us, hmm. a Danish guy, and his last book that came out suffered from exactly the same thing: the negative criticism, but really fierce. Hmm. You know, it wasn't enough to say that the book didn't scan well, or this paragraph wasn't very good, or the characters weren't well moulded. Mm. They had to say this bloke's an absolutely crap writer with no imagination whatsoever. Why is, he shouldn't be writing, he should be trained writing. That yeah. kind of negative criticism. Yeah. That, you know, guaranteed to sell a newspaper. Mm. His idea around it was to, was to maybe have a site, get your own website, mm. and uh, start criticising the critics. Yeah, yeah. And get everybody involved. Yeah. But to, to try and raise the level of criticism. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which is what I think was a good idea. Mm. I lived in, in Australia for a while. Yeah. I don't know anything about it really, but the reason I ask is because you wrote the tune My Heart is in New South Wales. Yeah. And I, when I was 14 or 15, mm. I actually play. I used to play it with... Um, the band I used to be in called Kerfuffle, and we used to play that tune. And um, but I don't know anything about why. Why did you move to Australia, for example, and why did you come back? Well, <laughs> have you ever been to Australia? No. Okay. <laughs> That's a, you wouldn't ask that if you've been. All right. <clears throat> because it's, it's uh, God's own country. It's the most fantastic place on earth. Right. I just, uh, it's the most colourful, most interesting. Mm. If you like uh, animals, wildlife, in any way, fauna, mm. if you just have to be interested in anything like that, mm. then there's, there is only Australia, really. Right. But well, maybe the Amazon, but, you know, yeah. the Galapagos, etc. A bit more Australia, difficult to move there. Australia is a remarkable place. Right. Did you play music over there? Then? Yeah, I did, but I, most of the time I, I came over here and toured and then uh, took the money back to Australia because it, uh, it, um, it went a lot further. The money goes a lot further than it does here. Right. Everything goes a lot further. Yeah. It's a wonderful place. It, it, it most, you know, everything, uh, all, all our landscape is ordered. We I mean, made it. Pocket handkerchief landscape. Mm. We've got very few places that, that are wild. Yorkshire Moors, maybe, mm. Dartmoor, but they're all Moors, really. You know, they don't want to come back here to, what, what have you got here? Parking beach. <laughs> yeah. And then you wrote My Heart is in New South Wales when you got back to England. Yeah. Just about. Yeah. It's a lovely tune, I love it. Oh, thank you. It's really yeah. lovely, yeah. I played for an old people's home the other day in Kent, and I played that tune to them and explained it to them, so there you go.
There's uh, about 30, 30 pensioners in oh, Kent. Thank you, I've heard your tune now. Yeah, see how you play it. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> Heavens. Fantastic. Good, good. It's a lovely tune, that. Eh? 